tech tycoon offers a stranger on a plane $100,000 to take their mask off. So here's where I'm at. Our story starts off with ultra-millionaire Steve Kirch. Kirch is a Silicon Valley veteran who is credited with one of the first versions of the optical mouse back in 1980. You know, like the mouse that you would use for your computer. He later co-founded Frame Technology Corp., which was bought by Adobe in 1995 and created the search engine InfoSeek, which was sold to Disney in 1999. His net worth is reported $230 million as of 2007. Now, Mr. Kirch aboards a Delta plane, and he's seated in first class next to a woman who is having her mask on. She's sitting there with her mask on, and as the story has been flushed out further, she, you know, the snacks come out, and that's when COVID, I guess, goes into hiding, so... COVID cannot be, and I don't, I haven't decided yet if I'm beeping out the word COVID or not yet because, you know, YouTube rules. So I, I should probably try to censor better. Um, the boogeyman germ. So the boogeyman germ goes away when you take your mask off just to sip water. He's like, oh, you're on base. That's fair. Or when you go to eat your snacks. So as most logical humans in this world, Mr. Kirch finds this, op- this mental gymnastics that these people go through absolutely ridiculous. Now, let's be real. Mr. Kirch is a computer genius. He obviously respects and knows the science. And as we further flushed out this topic that is the boogeyman germ, we've come to learn that the masks were never nearly as effective as they were purported to be. First, Lord Fauci tells us we don't even need masks. They're not that effective. And so nobody really wears masks. And this is at the onslaught of the pandemic when it's supposedly at its worst. Ha! Huh. But then we have the announcement that, well, we told you that masks were ineffective, not because they actually were ineffective, but because we were afraid we weren't going to have enough masks for the nurses and everybody else. So I'm sorry, just this is this was for your own good and the good of the society. What that told us from the beginning was that you're not telling us the information to be transparent. You're telling us information to achieve an end that you seek, right? So you're only feeding us the information to get the reaction you're intending, not just reporting the news. <laughs> I'd have to laugh at that. <laughs> I should be prosecuted. What happened on January 6th, Senator? (laughs) And then they're telling us to double mask. And then they're telling us, and long story short, because we've lived it all. Three years later, we can all concede that the masks aren't nearly as effective as as we've been led to believe. You know, especially those cheap, flimsy ones. You're not sitting there with the... K995, whatever that that I was wearing earlier. You're not wearing one of the super duper masks, just one of those flimsy. And and all we did was increase our waist. Like you should see there's more masks in shopping center, you know, gardens than cigarette butts anymore. And quick side point, have you ever seen the videos of these masks being made en masse? Okay, so you have these masks that need to be made super cheap, and you're getting boxes of, uh, you know, 500 for 1099. You ever wonder, like, how is it possible that these things that are so effective and so, you know, life-saving are so cheap with on such quantity? You should see them being sewn together in these, uh, you know, Asian countries where you know, we're not even going to talk about the slave labor that's pretty much putting it together. But then you've got... The masks are just out, you know, that like you because it comes to you in a plastic wrapping, you're under the impression, well, of course it's sanitary. It's fresh. I opened it brand new. Nobody else opened it before me. It was clean. Did you ever think of where it might be coming from? Uh, it's cheap. Ah, but back to our story. Mr. Kirch, the computer genius, a man who obviously understands and respects science. Well, Mr. Kirch being up to date on the most recent understandings of how these masks operate and how effective they truly are not, he leans to the lady sitting next to him and offers her $100,000 to take her mask off for the rest of the plane ride. So here you are. You've already taken a couple sips. 
and you're being offered $100,000 to take your mask off. In a heartbeat, me and you agree, we are giving that up. We are doing it, right? What am I missing? A hundred thousand. That, just so you know, I'm a manager of an office. That's three years of pay for most of the people that work in our office. So the average person works major portions of their life to, to get what you could get in an easy flight. I mean, heck, I would literally catch COVID for $100,000. Now, don't get me wrong. I had COVID before. I had it in the first wave when it was like really bad. And I'm not even going to deny, there were a few days there that I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy. But for $100,000, I mean, I did it for free. I would, I would totally do it. Now, let's, let's be real. Devil's advocate here. We'd also have to admit that rich people in first class most likely, if this guy has $235 million and $100,000 is expendable and, you know, just for the thought experiment, he's willing to give it up, I imagine the person next to him is probably equally as rich. And so on the principle, I can afford the $100,000 to deny because I am sticking to my guns and I don't need your $100,000. So I get that too. But the lady kept her mask on and she went the rest of the plane ride and did not get the $100,000. And hey, I can respect that people have their own personal decisions and I want to live in an empathetic world where they can make those decisions and not feel pressured or be, be in a world where they feel coerced to make a decision against their own will, <laughs> kind of like the masks themselves. So again, if you don't want to take your mask off, you have the freedom to deny $100,000. But what's been the most interesting part about this story has been the internet's reaction to Steve Kirch. So Steve Kirch, how this all got publicized, he posted a selfie on Twitter with the caption, I'm on board a Delta flight right now. The person sitting next to me in first class refused $100,000 to remove her mask for the entire flight. No joke. This was after I explained they don't work. She works for a pharma company. Kirch further went on to describe the situation. I started the bidding at $100, and I pointed out to her when she removed her mask for eating and drinking, she could be infected with one breath. So she had full disclosure. She took off her mask as soon as breakfast was served because everyone knows you can't get infected while you're eating. Okay, so one, there could be some professional reasons as to why she doesn't do it. I mean, think about it. She's the lady that works for the farm industry sitting in first class. Who knows? She could be one of the Johnson & Johnson boys' nieces, and you know, for the sake of her livelihood, she's got to keep pushing that boogeyman germ. But here's the thing. I mean, think about it. Not pushing the snake oil you're selling is almost like, I don't know, Instagram employees not letting their kids use social media. But of course, this wasn't just an interesting thought experiment put on by a millionaire that could do it. No, no, of course, the lady was stripped of her autonomy. This was an evil game played by a manipulative, seductive rich man. Some of the tweets are really what makes this story interesting. An entitled mansplainer. I bet the lady wished she had another seat. Harassed a woman minding her own business in a confined space where she couldn't get away from you. Lovely. Kirch was labeled a creep and called an obnoxious, arrogant fool. It's important to note that airlines and airports dropped the mask mandate last April following a court ruling. And after traveling quite a bit recently, I'd admit most people aren't wearing masks. It's very few that are. And again, I get it. Everybody has their own ailments and issues. We're in a flying tin can in the sky. You can't leave, and we're all kind of trapped there. And before COVID, when I'd hear a cough in the back, it sounded wet, wet and gross, and it made us all uncomfortable. I'm not sitting here pushing an agenda on you, but let's admit we left a time where agendas were pushed beyond people's autonomies. There were people that didn't feel the mask helped. In the world where the mask did help, then the person not wearing a mask wouldn't affect you. It's kind of like the umbrella analogy. If we both walked out in the rain and you had an umbrella and I didn't, it's not really going to kill you because apparently you're safe from the water and I'm not. 
Then the narrative snowballed. Well, you're the reason that it's evolving and it's still around. And if you would have just stopped and worn a mask, it would go away. Well, one, not only have we not shown that to be true, but you'd ha- where are the dead bodies? You never convinced people. We never got beyond this point because you can't point out that where are the dead bodies? There are no humans. Our whole instinct is survival. There are none of us that are in this life not looking to survive. So at the point at which people are dropping like flies and you're the next domino in line, you're going to throw on a mask and you're going to get that government juice in your arm so that way you're safe. But there was nothing compelling the people to do that because it didn't show to work. So here's where I'm at. Telling someone and making someone take their mask off and stripping them of their autonomy is dark, evil, and wrong. In no way do I support it. But on the flip side of that, that means you also have to start standing up for the autonomy and freedom of the person who doesn't want to wear one either. Some would say that the mandates, shutting down businesses, curfews, making people wear masks, those were all to condition us for stripping us of our rights and infringing on our liberties and making it not as estranged and alien as it used to be and as it should be. So I leave you with this. I'm not going to make somebody take their mask off. You got to take the position that you're, you can't put, make people put their masks on. In regards to this story, we I'm, I'm taking my mask off in a heartbeat. It's funny. Now it feels like I need to just start walking around with my mask on just in hopes of running into a billionaire that's going to pay me to take it off. But there's an interesting thought experiment here too. I see where he's going at it. I don't know if it's particularly indicative in this situation because he, she's a rich person in first class and who knows why she said no. Obviously, she didn't say no for her health because she's eating breakfast and taking her mask off, sipping her water and taking her mask off. If you were truly, truly scared for your health, your life, your safety, you wouldn't take those risks. So we admit it's a charade, but that's not the point. I get why she may not. I'm not going to be the one to tell her she should. But come on, don't you wish you had the expendable cash to just use people like science rats and see what would happen. He he wins. He wins in this scenario. He does in some way still use a satirical method of highlighting the fact that there isn't much logic in these situations and that they're just Nazi marching orders and not actually scientific, logical thoughts. We're not thinking for ourselves. We're waiting for the talking boxes to tell us what to do next. And at the end of the day, I'm going to leave it with the point I've always hung my hat on. Science is a system we all can rely on. That system, we can rely on it for one reason, and it's because it's able to be challenged, and it's able to be repeated by other like-minded scientists. At the point at which you snuff out anybody's ability to challenge, question, or test your science, guess what, baby cakes? It's no longer science, and it's an indoctrination from the gods. That's called manipulation and propaganda, and I truly implore you to break out of it by asking questions and challenging the status quo. Otherwise, guys, we'll catch you on the next time. So here's where I'm at.